Welcome to the end of season review of First Minister's Questions from Holyrood. Uh, our MSPs are on uh, holiday mood at the moment. They're all about to go up <coughs> to the sun and the sand and whatever they do. Back to their constituencies to do more work. Yes, sir. Yes, dear. <laughs> and uh, ourselves, well, we'll be back over the summer with a few recordings, but I'm not sure exactly what frequency. Meanwhile, today's guests are Norrie Stewart, Alex Grant, Phil Attridge and myself, Stuart Lockhead. Shall we start with, um, let's start with Alex today. What did you think about today's FNQs? Um, interesting, it was a mixture of end of term, a bit unexciting in some respects, uh, but I think it was the opening gambit in the Labour Party uh, starting to get, uh, trying to find a way of defending the indefensible and uh, the Scottish Government basically started to take them out as being the allies of the Tory party. Um, I think Joel Lamont made, made the, the weakness, potential weakness, certainly the attack point of the, the Scottish Government's position in independence is talking about lowering corporation tax, which Joseph Stiglitz has criticised and he's the guru. Um, and the common currency bit which gets attacked you won't have any part to do anything so the Labour Party will attack those things and they'll attack on top of that as was alluded to in her presentation um, you got to show us the money show us the calculation I need to see the working she said that a couple of weeks ago which is actually quite a good line in my opinion yeah, look, I mean, yeah overall what did you think say, say Jamal Lamont I mean what was she, was she, was she, did she, did she any good today was she Alex was he on form and, today? And Alex was on form today. I, I still think he, I think he could have kicked them back a bit harder in terms of uh, labour policies, but there'll be more of that to come. I say, I think it was an end of term tone to it. Um, no, his 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 response was good. Um, it, it was up to the standard of last week. She was attacking what, what she the only thing she can attack, but she will become increasingly vulnerable because of Labour London. Uh, policies of course. To be honest, Alex, I don't think, I mean, she wouldn't, to, but I'm sitting here, she read, she read a, a big long speech. Well, she, she must have known it was uh, going to be longer than usual. She always does that. But it was, she hasn't learned a lesson. She hadn't, hadn't asked a question. Can you actually remember? <clears throat> don't look at your notes. Can you remember? Can you even remember any of her? I mean, journalists take notes, but I can't remember anything apart from her comment about your gang. It was pish. And I can remember that because Simon's retort was, my gang's bigger than yours. Yes. You know. Uh, as of, as of she last rambles. election. She rambles. It would be much more effective if she was pointed sharp to the point. You know what I mean? Well, she, you've always said that. I don't, I, I, you tend to, I, I'm not sure that's true, but it doesn't really matter what I think in that respect. It's what the punters who get the message thing and how many of them are. Well, it's down to the journalists and they yeah. interpret it and, and what he's got. Yeah, and we're not, we're not copying the she's a great debater, so, you know, we won't. Who says she's a bit? Well, but if she comes across, it's, all, it's this I'm more pro than you are, you know, yeah. kind, kind, kind of attitude. Um, and right. she said she's getting stymied with this because of. Well, like, you know, stick Tories in that hand in Westminster and the Labour in that hand, you know, do that little bit and go, which one's in which hand? Yeah. Uh, same difference. No, that's right. Uh, she is going to get completely hamstrung. And it's that, oh, it's that, const I mean, it, I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't watch it at the end with that head stuck to the, to the you know, head well, stuck to the screen. point out that her it's attacking just, this possible cut, the 3P cut, the corporation tax, really only appeals, it, 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 it only rings bells with pro very strong pro-Labour activists. The rest of the world doesn't actually swallow the, the either argument. They don't, you know, they... Yeah, but I think a lot of Labour voters might swallow it. You're supporting the rich well, companies. Uh, That's um, the line. Well, they're not, because, I mean, Labour was supporting the rich companies. I, they kept I mean, it, didn't do it. They yeah. just didn't collect their bloody taxes yeah, I mean, on them. Yeah, you know that and I know yeah. that. I'm not There's defending. No, there is no, telling you why she's There is no statistical proof that cut in corporation tax generates more taxation. No, but there's no proof either way. Ireland's... There is proof that a cut in personal tax generates more. Yeah. Not in corporation tax. Well, I'm fine, then, so he shouldn't be doing it. Well, I mean, it, he's obviously, I mean, they've got a paper, they've published a paper. Well, I know, and he claimed. And this that, is what we think that will happen. Well, well, increase the GDP. I, I, I mean, I, I'll stick to my position on this. I don't think it really ring that or ring bells with the ordinary voter. It, he, it's, it's just to please the people 
in the benches behind her. No, no. I oh, I not. see. Hard, hard point. Yeah. But it's like no, I don't don't operation yeah. tax. It wasn't about that. That was the vehicle she used to accuse him of. Uh, it's going to cost jobs. She's got look. The point that I tried to make before, Stuart, is she's got very little avenue of attack compared to the amount of attack options he's got on her government's policies. So what she's trying to say, what have I got to attack? You're going to help rich companies just like that, that you know, these bandits from, you know, whether it's uh, your man with a golf course or whatever. You, you're you're in bed with these guys. That's 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 what she's out trying to say. But to she's them. not going to get away with it. Gordon Brown's recent, you know, and Tony Blair's Gordon Brown's I mean, government. Sad, sad death, the SNP, not just Sam, have got no history for them to throw back, for the opposition to throw it. Mm -hmm. The opposition have history. So this is actually an easy gig. One this letter to See, one see one letter. Just go to, to, to the one subject that came in there, which was going around, which was health. Um, and again, because it's, you know, it's statistics and you can play with that. And it's mud, it's mud really sticky that will stick. Um, and that's Labour's health secretaries. Every single one was in hock to United Health, to Boots, to Virgin Health, one health secretaries and, and you know, when, when it was all office consultants, earning huge amounts of money every year from it. How much is Blair worth? Brown, I mean, because, you know, he's, he can give away a million and a half. He's only been out two or three years. If anybody was in hot to business, they were. Or you could see most of the Labour cabinet with the soles of their bloody feet. Well, what, what I find quite strange about it, Simon's position is how totally he's sticking to the positive. I mean, the opportunity to, to viscerate them. I thought today is there, you know, and he's not doing. Yeah, it. You know, he leaves you know, the, the last half a year. Look when the camera swung when they when he went across the cap. Uh, sorry, Simon just sat there listening to it, and he I know he looked so calm, so collected, not a worry line in his forehead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, watch, just watching her ranting away. I, I noticed um, how quickly he was gasping to get on his feet. He was well, she was going on and on. He's here before yeah, he gets I mean, involved, you know. But she, she was going on and on. Yeah, but she should be pulled up for that. I mean, that's. I mean, for the presiding Making officer. Speeches to, instead to, of asking to, questions. To, 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 yeah, yeah, but the whole point is that at the end of the speech, there wasn't a question. I know. No, she, I agree with she should have been pulled up for that. Uh, th that. But that was unusually long. I mean, I know you say she's long winded as opposed to terse, but. That was the longest I've ever seen her. Um, and that shows that shows the weakness of the line of defence, in my opinion, because you had to try and rant and rave about the same point, saying, you people think it's a joke, I support the proletariat, you don't, you know, and that's... Well, I'm mean, a common to me, person. To me, I have no idea who's advising her, but you get up, you go bang, 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 you sit down. And there's two reasons for that. One is you don't take up all the time, you give everybody else an opportunity to have a dig at him. It's probably a pile of... 17 questions are more difficult to answer than two. Well, maybe it's a pile of uh, John McTiernan who's about to get ejected from Australia with his great success with Julia Gillard. Cause oh, right, she's just lost her job. Yeah, I must... Yeah, well, people didn't like the idea of her sitting on a seat knitting a big kangaroo. <laughs> Queen. Yeah, for the royal baby. <laughs> yeah, that was another story. Uh, honestly. Okay. What, what I find, what I'm finding interesting is actually the Tory benches. Because mm. they're, they're not going to put their head above the parapet. No, she's sticking very carefully now to things she's, that... She's Annabelle Golby. The, the, the topic she's this... Annabelle Golby did. The, and the topic this, Goldie was better. this week was, oh, was very much a Tory topic. It's about because it's, it's, it's quite well... People with homes that could be sold to, mm. to, to pay for their free personal care tend to be Tory voters. But the, what I'm saying is she's... Uh, I don't know whether she sat down with Annabelle Goldie and, she, and Annabelle Goldie's gone, shut up about anything that really matters. <laughs> well, basically. Be that. quiet. Yeah, that, that, that's fine, but then it, it becomes meaningless because, you know, all, all he said on both the accounts she was uh, talking about is, look, we'll get the facts out and, we'll, and it will be properly dealt with. So all she tried to attack him on was, well, I asked you last week how many people... How many, it was thousands in my press release yesterday, it's hundreds today, how many people are we talking 72. about? And he said, well, we found 72. And she said, oh, there's a lot of folk who, 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 who won't complain because they don't know how to complain. I mean, Some of I, whom are dead. Yeah, I mean, it was... It's, that was a good line. It is 
considering they are the UK government party, it was extremely insipid and has been for the past three weeks. It sounds like you're saying she was a lying Tory bastard. How unusual. No, well, well, that goes without saying. Point, <laughs> you keep saying it, it's unnecessary. <laughs> what they've moved on to Thank is you. slump the very smaller local issues. Which is safer because if Simon can't come back and bash them because of what's, what's happening down say, south. Well, George Osborne's not doing anything about it, although he did in the sense that he said at least there's free personal care up here. And he wasn't, he didn't attack. He was very stable. It's very measured. Oh, yeah, no, it's, and, you know, it's, it's got, a problem that we have in Scotland because... Because we've got free personal care. Uh, so here's a theory. The next one's going to be the people that didn't receive their bus passes on time. Mm -hmm. Uh, students uh, who aren't paying any fees, they're, they're her areas. Anything that isn't happening in England, but is happening in Scotland, yeah, so but she's even, going to ignore anything. Well, yeah. just, let's, let's just let broaden out a wee bit here, just for a minute. I thought it was quite um, noticeable that um, Alan, Alex Salmon made a tribute to Lord Peter Fraser, mm -hmm. who died quite Bomb soon. them! Bomb them! Well, that's the point, you know. <laughs> he, he gave this statesman-like tribute on behalf of the Parliament for a man that just died, because he had been, he'd run a couple of his <coughs> lives. But well, yes. Didn't get paid for it. Well, there you go, turns out. That. But, as you say, very interesting, He's, this is the very man that suggested that if Scotland had had their independence, that uh, the RAF would bomb Scottish airports to stop well, whoever else, anybody else, it's German, North Koreans, Koreans, Norwegians, Koreans. North Koreans using them. Was he yeah. drunk at the time? Probably. I don't know, but somebody should dig him up and give him a good kick in. It wasn't, it wasn't actually him, that was a <laughs> re-quote by him. Yeah? Yeah, it was a re-quote from some lord. Well, I felt like saying that to him. If he's saying, bomb Scotland, I'll dig him up and give him a kick in. <laughs> it, 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 it looks as though that, uh, that Alex Salmond works to get a dig in at Gordon Brown every... I think he brings his name up every every every. Well, it's well, and and I'll tell you why, because Gordon Brown, you've only just seen the start, in my opinion. Gordon Brown is gonna be coming out very strongly in the no campaign in the next twelve months. So he knows Bruns already stuck his nose out of the moose hole, and he's gonna have he's gonna have a go at him every week he he can do to try and discredit him because they keep you know. Are the RBS fiasco is your fault. The Scottish government supported Fred Why? Goodwin. What a joke. The Why? regulator was down the road. Why has Salmon never turned around and said, when they bring that up, mm. you sent a letter to Fred Goodwin. Why didn't Salmon turn around and said, yeah, and Alistair Darling had him as an advisor mm -hmm. and gave him a bloody knighthood. knighthood. Well, I think he misses opportunities. Wasn't it the colour put forward for the knighthood, was it not? Well, whichever one, it doesn't matter. The actual line of attack is a wee bit, a wee bit better than that, in my opinion, though. The line of attack should be, because uh, it's actually quite good to be self-effacing, uh, you know, and make you've made mistakes. Uh, yes, I didn't understand, uh, because I didn't have all the detail, unlike Mr. Brown, who was the Chancellor of the Exchequer or the Prime Minister, and was in control of the UK regulator, who should have been looking at what he was doing. I thought he was doing... He was making a sound decision. No one else criticised him, who, like me, didn't have the information. But the person who should have had the information was the regulator. Your party was managing the regulator. Take a look. Well, I, I'm, I'm no expert, but I, was, I followed this. It was the ABM AMRO takeover yeah, that crucified RBS. Yeah. And I followed it in quite a lot of detail before, because um, Barclays were about to take over ABM yeah, and they pulled out. And uh, he, uh, he, the people have a bigger number on the table than Barclays. That's why Barclays pulled out. Barclays didn't pull out because they decided it was a bad idea. He offered even more money. It was hubris. He was determined he was going to get it. And it, was, it was also about determined to make the RBS the biggest bank in the world. Yeah, exactly. And it was just absolutely foolhardy. It was clear... If you, Following, reading the business pages at the time before the deal was done, that it was going to be a big mistake. Yeah, but the but the regulator and yeah, these so-called experts went ahead with it anyway. Should have dealt with that. He, but that whole bit around that time, that, that that whole political atmosphere, I mean, could be summed up with Gordon Brown, which is what it should use. It wasn't Alex Salmond at the Mansion House speech in two thousand and seven. He stood there like an old smug and saying that, and lauding all these people yeah. have screwed the world economy, that we want more of it. We want more of it. And a year later, everything was just gone. And that Gordon City, and it was actually Eric Hobsbawm that did, it, did the best analysis of 
Gordon Brown very easily. He yeah. says, uh, he says, yes, he says he's, he, he talks a really good economics, but the trouble with Gordon Brown is he doesn't understand it. <laughs> The, the, the issue here, though, is the Scottish Labour Party, not that that exists, but the Labour, the part of Labour in Scotland is attempting to behave as though it is the old Labour Party, uh -huh. take, taking no cognizance whatsoever of what the Labour Party did. And at every opportunity, they will, they will suggest that any Scottish government, which is the SNP, uh, who in, gives any form of... Uh, support um, or sits down to dinner with any member of the corporate elite is a bad guy, you know, because that they think that's so. It probably sounds good to Labour voters in government, but it's not credible. I don't, based I don't, on what I don't, I don't, I don't agree with you at all. I mean, it, I, it, it's 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 just to whip up the supporters. Yeah, that's, but, they like to hear it. No, no, they believe it. Yeah, but look, hang on a minute, Stuart. I don't. It's not to whip up the fifty people sitting in the seats behind them. If you go down into the government today and start asking people questions, the sort of re answer you're going to get is, well, you can't really trust that Alex Salmon because he's in the pocket of big business. Because ah, well, that, yeah. that's the line they're portraying. That's, but, to but, the, but that's that, it's not a, it's not the line that the Labour Party been portraying. It's the line that the Scottish media have been portraying for the last five years. Yeah, yeah. but the Labour Party will be telling their supporters whom they expect to well, vote no. Well, sorry, that very thing. Kirsty Walk, Jack. McConnell, pals, yeah. um, all that. I mean, they're all straight down about. The only one with any news that's in there now that isn't in the pockets of, of Labour is uh, Ponsonby. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, look, the point the point that I, I would like to make here is, and this is what we've got to see from, from here on in, the Labour Party's policies tied up with the Tories, which Alex started to really... Uh, exploit today is a line of attack that must be sustained but it has oh, to be yeah. it has to be complemented by a clearer vision of what an independent scotland will do it has to be because I, I still think that's the bit that's missing because the fearties are still going to be fearties and uh, the fearties are still persuadable in my opinion <coughs> that if the uk economy is down the yin yang the scottish economy is part of that down the yin yang he has to say no no we raise this amount of money we get this amount back We'd be that much better well, off if we didn't have tried. Yeah, he started it, but it needs yeah. to be built on. What about uh, the, the, the slightly off topic, but not really? What, uh, what about the revelations about Project Fear? <laughs> Apparently, the name uh, the Better Together <coughs> campaign well, actually called their campaign. We're we're Arax, right? I mean, we follow it. Yeah, nobody else. Seems like it. Nobody that follows it is Project Fear. Yeah. This must be something we you are all day. Um, somebody in the No campaign in allegedly, Glasgow, allegedly, allegedly admitted they refer to their campaign. And they said a leaflet. Well, you mean fucking Egypt's arseholes and reprobates. No, they call, it, they call it Project Fear inside in the in yeah. The oh yeah, office. I can imagine. I uh, well, they um, and and of course they've denied that they call it that at all. It's all bollocks. And I don't know if others all said anything about it, but I'm damn certain that's what you would say. Yeah, that's just the, the, that's the. That issue. sounds like a Jim Murphy kind of word as he's sitting there getting his rocks well, off thinking I, about that. I mean, that's what that's what it is, and it's been successful, and they're not going to change it. Well, it, who says it's been successful? Well, it's been successful in their terms. I mean, the, 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 there's been no change in the, the polls for a year. No, but yes, be no change in the polls. The fear campaign has not increased the no vote. Equally, the yes campaign has not increased the yes vote. But there's no doubt that, um, as has been pointed out from several quarters, there's 30 to 40 percent in the middle who don't know. The fear campaign, from what I can see, is having some effect, but it's not huge. And the more they do it, and I'm absolutely certain Alex Salmon has signed up to this, the more they do it, the worse it's going to get, and he's keeping his powder dry until later. Well, okay. ne ne negativity ha has been seen actually not to work when, when, when yeah, Labour has done it. Down. Yeah, it wears you, you down. But also, we'll see the bit where you were saying where, where about the Labour Tory alliance, Labour Tory alliance, and they're doing a big business. Now, like I was saying with the Health Secretary, and you have a look right across the spectrum at last Labour Secretary's estate. And all he wants to do is, when they come up with health, is turn around and say, oh yeah, I suppose we could be like your health secretaries and government, uh, in the pockets of, because it's all verifiable, because yeah. it's all in the book, no. in the pockets of, in the pockets of. Yeah. And when they look at Darling, they look at these people, they go, wow, oh, was he? Because the one thing they can work on is jealousy, in, in that sense, right? They're pocketing, they're pocketing sleeves. Hit them with the yeah. sleeves. Well, it's not sleeves, it's all perfectly legal. But the whole point is, it's all about yeah, that but, perception. No, absolutely. But the, the strategy to win the yes vote is, is quite simple, in my opinion. You mustn't tell...
people who are currently thinking about voting no, and particularly Labour supporters, that they're wrong. What you have to tell them is their leaders are actually betraying them because that yeah. is what they're doing. Well, That's the line of okay. attack. Right. They're betraying them. Oh, fair enough. Um, did anybody notice that was it last week there was some co uh, discussion about the, the Jimmy Reid Foundation's uh, paper that came out about a fortnight ago? Common Wheel. Common Wheel. Common Wheel, yeah. Um, See, that, that's really, this, this struck me yesterday. That's really interesting. Labour can't take part in that. That, that is Labour territory. Well, no, it is what and used they, to be Labour territory, well, yes. I take it. You know, mm -hmm. but they can't take part but it. Was bro it. it was broadly it was, accepted in the, in, the, in the mainstream press. Yeah, but it, Admittedly, the really important thing for me about that isn't, isn't actually even the content or the conclusion. It's the fact that Labour cannot be seen to be involved in it because it's a yes campaign yeah, yeah. policy. It, it, and it, it's weird. I mean, I, I don't know how much coverage it'll get, but I'm going to be asking Hoddersall, but it, uh, but it needs are to you be, involved in this? Are the, you talking? Where are your ideas? For no, the yeah, I, I agree, but the, one of the problems, that you're absolutely right, that, and it did get a fairly good response, but the, but the Yes campaign and or the Scottish Government need to be putting forward that sort of vision because the mm -hmm. Labour Party can't attack it. They can't participate in it and they can't attack it because they're attacking the normal ground. They're up the yin-yang with the policies of... Well, that's, that's kind of what I'm saying, but I'm trying to put, pull out, because it is in the term for us as well to some extent, that there are some positives around. And I think also, I think I was struck with the, just that part of Salmond when he mentioned, you know, that the Tory party for a generation have been looking for allies in Scotland. Yeah, and that's a good line. And now they finally found some. Yeah, yeah. And it's the Labour Party. Yeah. And that, I'm sure that's going to be repeated. I know well, it, will. it will. Now that is a I'm, good line. I'm, I'm a lot more confident today than I was two weeks ago. I mean, I, I've still... my are talking my, about a referendum. Yeah, my, my buttress is still that I'm, I think the SNP are smarter than a lot of them and they've got stuff up their sleeve. You don't throw all your... You, you don't... You, know, you don't I, spend I really your whole don't. arsenal in a one -up. No, you don't. You keep the best bits till the end because people have short term memories and all they've got to do is all you've got to remember now next year well not next year but in 2015 and you're in anywhere and you vote Labour you're going to keep the bedroom tax they're going to, you're going to lose everything the, the, the health service will probably still carry on being privatised um, and then you vote Tory and you think oh, oh, oh it's going to be the same we're Wait, getting rolled back. We're going to be turned Phil, into a really bad version Phil, of American uh, Phil, generally whatever, spe generally charities. Speaking, but generally speaking, if you, you spend time down in the south of England, you will be very much more aware of why people vote Tory. People vote Tory because of their wallet. It's entirely s selfish. Whereas a lot of people vote Labour because they like to think they've got principles. Mm -hmm. But Labour have, sh have, sh have thrown away all their principles. So the reason to vote Labour has just disappeared. Well, see, we're actually going, right. we're going back to the, the British Empire style, right? The whole point is, you're peasants, you're there to be used, abused, and well, sent out. You, it's you, a fight. You you're not it. a society, they're not, you're, you're not citizens, you're subjects. Well, you missed it because you were on holiday, you rich piece of... He's always on holiday, isn't he? It's uh, this local Cuba, government, it's these brilliant local government pensions. London. You know? <laughs> uh, did you watch the documentary on STV about the workhouse? No, oh, I missed that. I'll get that and catch up. Uh, the, the workhouse. The workhouse. Yeah. Right. And interviewed some famous people who. It, it, who it came from Where Do I Come From, that yeah. program that looks back at you. Oh, family. who do you think you are, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. But what the most interesting thing about it was the soundtrack with different pictures could be used now. Mm -hmm. Huge chunks of it. Yeah. And you know this idea that there was the deserving poor and the undeserving. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You were yeah. categorised. You were a malingerer if you used it. Yeah. And that's exactly times. what the Tory party are saying. It's, it, 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 I, I was sitting there with my mouth open. I couldn't believe it. You could have picked up 50, 60 percent of the soundtrack and just put different pictures, modern day pictures in. And that, I think, is the line of attack. Yeah. yeah. And also, do see, you want yeah. to go back to this? Or do you want to come up to the top of the hill and look on the other side? Yeah, that, no, that, that's absolutely right. But you see, the reason why John Lamont started this with us, he borrowed it from whoever, the Something for Nothing Society is, uh, it's, a, it's an echo to some extent of what Annabel Goldie used to say, which is quite smart, actually. There's no such thing as free 
bus passes, free education, free anything. It all has to be paid for. And the line of attack, the, the only line of attack the Labour Party can have at the end of the day in all of this is given that they're copying the Tory policy is that we can't afford it. And if you say you can afford it, you're a liar. But I'm sorry, Alan, I can't answer to what people have just said. The point is, people generally speaking said in the South, they voted Labour because they thought they stood for something. They voted to Tory out of personal self, self greed, whatever it was. And there's no point in voting Labour if they don't have any principles to, no. to stand for. Oh, but yeah, I, agree with, than that. I agree with you, but the line of attack they're all going to take now, because Simon is right, they're all in the same boat. It is, well, philosophically, we'd love to be like that, but we can't afford it. And unless somebody else can stand there and tell the population they can't afford it. You see, I spoke to somebody no, but yesterday. Not, but now, let me finish this bit. Right. I spoke to somebody yesterday who I hadn't seen for a bit, who's, who's more plugged in than I am, because I spent 40 years in England, I, I has less of a network here than him. I said, what's the sort of feedback? He said, well, I've had some you know, people changing their mind and coming towards the SP. He said, funnily enough, I'll quote you my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law has always voted Labour, and she sat there the other night, other night telling me, and the Tory party love this, it works. She, she's telling me, well, I don't ever can I trust Labour with the economy. And yet she, she, she is a Labour voter, mm. Not for selfish reasons, yeah, but but, you, but there is a lot of people okay, out there who've right, been persuaded. Right, but my, my point is this: that uh, that um, yeah, one of the strengths of the, the yes campaign that the SNP can can go, adopt is to have principles to put 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 forward the yes campaign as we are a society that has principles. Yeah, but you've got to fund them. You've got to fund them, Stuart. You can have all the principles you like. You need to be able to tell the voter we can afford the principle. No, but, no, 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 because you, no, you, you can put you principles... You to be able to prove anything. You just need to keep repeating it. I don't you can put that. state principles oh, I don't in a constitution. No. But, you put, yeah, but you, look, you can put it... A the whole, constitution. As a whole People debate. have the right to pre-education. The right to have yes, yeah, you, the right, you the can, right, you the can, right. Yeah, you can, but you, but you, but the opposition will say that's all very well. Can we afford it? If uh, it's okay. in the constitution, anyway, gentlemen, we're um, wittering on for some considerable length. This is, I mean, we run well, out. Of, we're coming I know, you're not aware of the technicalities. We yeah. run out of memory. We run out of batteries. The thing just stops dead. Have we run out? No. Oh well, yeah. then let's get to the scores. Then we can start keep ranking. Well, right. okay. <laughs> Alex, right. Joanne. Uh, four. Alex? Nine. Ruthie? Three. Presiding officer? Uh, six. Phil? Nine. For Joanne, that's pretty good. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and for, jo was it Joanne? Prolier than thou. That's a good, that's so a good, good one. Pro Prolier than thou. Um, four. Ruth? Ruth, nothing. Uh, <laughs> And I, I thought, I thought he, sh he should have really gone for a lot of them with her end. I, I'll only give the presiding officer three. I, I, I thought, look, I thought she was a lot better last week. Stu, the week Joanne, oh, pitiful, pitiful. No, what? Three. Um, Elaine, well, that was the week before. Alex. Uh, Alex, nine. I'd give him nine point five because he was so calm and collected. Um, <laughs> Ruth, well, because she's on safe ground again, I'll give her five because she's staying out of trouble, basically. And uh, presenting officer, well... Oh, was yeah, that doing your job, though? Um, I, no, but she's staying out of trouble. She's staying out of trouble, <laughs> but... <laughs> Sorry, it's... She's, not, yeah, she's not getting a battery in every week. 24 carat uh, uh, Presenting officer, I'm not say. sure. On the one hand, he was, he was naming yeah, he's uh, the bad boys and girls at the back. Um, on the other hand, he let Joanne make a huge speech for chat up was wrong. Yeah, totally so I'll, I'll give him three. Yeah, so I'll call it. Uh, Joanne, I'm going to give her two because I'm fed up listening to her voice. <laughs> Alex, I'll give eight. Because I do think he needs to start listing all the hits. Ruthie, babe. I'll give her a four because <laughs> she stayed out of trouble. Because I'm an officer, I'm going to score him up at six because it was end of term. They no, were right excited. Like and I caught the ones he had. Yeah, <laughs> you know, carving the initials on the desk before they Yeah, were. but yeah, at the end of term, he had his chance to spoil their holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think um, the two, the, the presenting officer and her deputy, female deputy, have already gone on their holidays? Oh, they might have done, yeah. Right, scores on the doors Joanne, 13. Ruth, 12. Ooh. 
which considering Joanne was on her feet for four and a half Well, they weeks, are allies. That's right, yeah. Um, so the combination of the two of them, in fact, the presiding officer was 18, because um, I, I think that's fair, because he did slap them down a bit. But strangely enough, if you add them all up, no, not quite. Still never mind. But Joanne <laughs> and Ruth together, 25 or less. 25 to Alex is 35. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. He, look, he does look more comfortable when he can growl a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, that nicey nicey thing we all thought he was going to do to try and get the female. I think balance is pretty good. Did actually. you notice anything else, man? Like what? He's lost weight. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. You yeah, yeah. Perhaps he's lost, lost weight. weight. Somebody was saying last week. Not a lot, but you can well. see it's starting to look. Did Somebody be? was saying they didn't look well last week. Well, there was a thought. I thought that was one yeah, thing. Yeah. That's probably, the first thing. That's probably the first didn't thing. Could have been on some no, no, that's, that's the first thing you think. diet or something for a week. Seriously, Phil, well, that's the first thing you think. Older men, when they start losing weight in a hurry, they think yeah. they've got the cancer. Yeah, it's first thing oh, I think. think. Yeah. Right then, guys, well, I suppose it's time to say thank you for you guys watching and listening. And uh, we're not, um, there will be no FMQs to review for quite a couple of months. I dare say we'll manage to get together and uh, produce possibly something called a leaf noise up show now and again. And I've no idea what else the summer will bring, but have a good summer. And uh, thanks everybody for coming. Yeah, Goodbye. Bye. Bye.